Today, I'm going to share with you what to do if you're retaking the LSAT and you've hit a score plateau. For those who don't know me, my name is Steve Schwartz. I've been teaching the LSAT since 2005, and I personally increased my own LSAT score from a 152 to a 175. I have an email from a student here who writes, Hey Steve, I've taken the LSAT three times and scored 152, 154, and 153. I'm feeling stuck and discouraged. I need at least a 165 for the schools I want to attend. I've used prep books, online courses, and study groups, but nothing seems to help. I'm thinking of taking time off work to focus on studying, but worry about finances. Is there a different approach I can take to break out of this plateau and improve my score? Well, first off, I'm rather surprised that your scores are so consistent. I usually find that students' scores fluctuate a bit more than this, so at least you're not experiencing this frustration of fluctuating scores. That being said, of course, it sounds like you want to improve your LSAT score by more than 10 points, and you've already tried a wide variety of resources. So I wonder if you need more time to study by taking time off from work, given that you've already been presumably putting time into these resources that you've taken advantage of, whether it's the prep books, the courses, and the study groups. If you've worked through the prep books, if you've taken the courses, if you showed up consistently to those study groups, it may be that you need to change your approach rather than necessarily putting in a whole lot more time to studying. And I wouldn't want you to have to stress about finances in terms of taking off from work to focus on studying primarily or exclusively. Of course, if you can study for the LSAT full time, that's a great benefit. I find that students do great when they're able to put in four, five hours a day. Maybe you can reduce your work without eliminating work entirely. So maybe you can drop down to part time rather than working full time and that could free up some additional time to studying. But again, I think you may want to change your approach and look critically at what hasn't worked for you in the past. It's possible that you'll achieve significant breakthroughs if you take on some new strategies and a new LSAT prep approach. I would recommend, of course, maybe something a bit more personalized than what you've tried in the past. If the books haven't done it for you, if the courses and study groups haven't done it for you, you may want to consider some private one-on-one -on -one coaching to focus on your weak areas, help you target them, work on your schedule, and look at exactly what's going wrong for you because you've put in a lot of time, it sounds like, but you haven't yet seen the score increase that you're looking for. I'm also curious to know what your practice test results were like going into those previous three LSAT attempts. Were you scoring in the low to mid 150s and then not surprised at all when that was the score you got on test day? Or did you experience a drop? I would think if you need at least a 165 for the schools that you're targeting and your practice test results are 10 points lower than that in the lead up to the test, you might think to yourself, hey, I'm not sure I want to take this test officially because I'm nowhere close to where I want to be. Usually, I like students to be at least a couple points within range of the score that they're targeting, meaning if you want a 165 on test day, you'd want minimum 162 going in. Maybe you get lucky and score a few points higher. Ideally, though, if you want a 165 on test day, I would like for you to be at at least a 168 going into the test so that you have a buffer in case you have a bad proctor or a technical issue. Even on your worst day, you're still going to get that 165 that you're looking for. I know that it's frustrating that you haven't yet seen the results that you're looking for despite having put in the time, but I don't want you to lose hope. I think you may just need to change your approach if the previous resources that you've tried haven't worked for you. If you'd like my support with the one-on-one -on -one coaching, you can check out the links below to find out more and to book a call with me. My team would be glad to help you out. We can set you up with a program where you're getting consistent private one-on-one -on -one coaching, ideally on a weekly basis from now till your test date. You'll be able to book those sessions directly on your coach's calendar. My coaches have all scored a 170 or above on their official LSATs, and they're proficient and trained in my methods, like the Socratic review method, helping you pinpoint your weak areas, helping you find more efficient approaches, because sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And so having some expert guidance from someone who's been through the process can make your path that much smoother. Again, I don't want finances to be a barrier to you getting the help you need. I don't think that you need to take time off from work entirely. And it's possible to create for you an LSAT study schedule that lets you take maximum advantage 
of your time outside of work so that you can still maintain your job even if you reduce it whether full-time or part-time. It could be possible for you to fit in maybe an hour before work, an hour during lunch, an hour after work, and then a bit more on the weekends. That could be sufficient for you to make steady forward progress and take the LSAT and secure that 165 within the next few months. Anyway, that's all for now. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.